can't make it, Lord, I can't go. And I know Brother Cliff has felt that many times, and I thought, God, that I need to get to the house of the Lord, that I can have my strength. And this morning, as the girls were singing, he touched me. And the Lord touched me. And here I am today. Thank you. here this morning. I'm going to read in Genesis 26 verse number 18. Amen. Genesis 26 and 18. And Isaac digged again the wells of water, which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham, and he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. I'm going to focus right there at the beginning of that passage. And Isaac digged again the wells of water. That's just a King James way of saying that he reopened stopped up wells. Amen. 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 That's what we're going to talk about this morning. Let's go to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we're so thankful. We are so thankful today, God, for your presence, for the power of your spirit. God, I pray for each and every precious soul that is here, that they would receive from your spirit today, right now. Let them feel the power of your spirit. Touch their hearts, God. And let their hearts be open and ready to receive what your spirit would say to us here today. Take complete control, Lord. Take complete control of this service and touch each life right now. Bring healing, Lord, into the building. Those that need a healing touch, God, we know that you are the healer. And we give you the praise and the glory, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we claim it right now. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. You can be seated. Amen. Genesis 26 opens up with this verse. And there was a famine in the land. There was a famine in the land. And Isaac, he went into the land of Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him in verse number 2 and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land. And listen to this promise. And I will be with thee. Yes. And will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. He is a promise-keeping God. Amen. If He's made promises to you, you can just grab onto those promises and you can hold on to the promises of God. Yes, sir. And so Isaac obeys the voice of God. And when he gets to the land, he discovers that the wells that his father had dug had been stopped up. A stopped up well is of no value until you go in, you redig. And you clean out the debris. Yes. You have to reopen that well so that the fresh water will again be available. Proverbs 5 and 15 says, Drink waters out of thine own cistern, and running waters out of thine own well. Now what's the difference between a well and a cistern? Yes. Well, a well is a deep shaft that is bored far underneath the surface. And the well contains water which percolates through the rocks on the side. It's a natural spring and it feeds itself with water from the water that is in the earth that God put there, by the way. Amen. God put that water there. Now a cistern is a place that is dug out. Now there's a lot of places where there's not natural water that's already in the ground, so what they'll do is they will look for a place where the water runs 
and they'll dig out a cistern to capture the water. Now the water, the cisterns are frequently mentioned in the scriptures. It says in Jeremiah 38 and 6, it says they took Jeremiah and they cast him into the dungeon. When you look, read down in the verse, it says, they let down Jeremiah with cords and in the dungeon there was no water but mire. So Jeremiah sunk in the mire. Yeah. So think about this pit that they have carved out and as the water goes down, when it gets to the bottom, there's just this mud just sits there and they dropped him down into the bottom of it. There was no water but the mire was still there and he sank down into it. It says in Genesis 37 they took Joseph, they took away his coat of many colors and they cast him in a pit. The pit was empty, there was no water right. in it. David said, I waited patiently in Psalms 40 and 1 for the Lord. He had cried unto me he inclined unto me, he heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just feel like you're in this pit. Come on. But God can reach in and He can bring you up out of that pit. Yes, He can. And set your feet on the rock to stay. Amen. Never forget this. God is the fountain of living water. Amen. 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 Jeremiah 2 and 13 says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. You see, as Isaac came and he looked and he saw the wells and the wells were filled up with dirt and gravel and debris and he couldn't get to that water. Why was it so important to him? Because water is essential for life. Amen. You've got to have water if you're going to survive. Water does a lot of things physically for you. It regulates your body temperature. You ever notice that you start sweating to keep you cool when it's hot outside? If you're from Texas, you know that. <laughs> and if you don't replace the water, you can become dehydrated and suffer from heat exhaustion. Come on. So what do they say? Drink lots of water. Water helps lubricate and cushion your joints. Water helps to remove the wastes from your body. Water aids in the digestion of food and helps to break down the nutrients so the food can be absorbed into your body. Water helps the blood and oxygen as it circulates through your body. Water improves your cognitive functions. It helps you to think. It helps to fight off illnesses such as kidney stones. And those are just a few of the things that water does. But if you think about it in the physical realm, how essential water is for survival, Think about how important the flowing waters of the Spirit are necessary in order for your spirit to survive. Oh, there's sometimes your spirit is crying out for the living God. Your spirit is crying out saying, it's been a long time since I felt the power of God move through my heart and touch me. Oh, I need the Spirit to move on me. I love reading stories of great revival. When Jonathan Edwards preached his famous sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, it was a time when they called it the First Great Awakening. And I was reading a little bit about it, and they had a lot of camp meetings that happened at that time. And this was in the uh, early the 1700s. And when he was preaching, it says, if you look it up in the uh, Wikipedia, you can read about it. And it says, the speakers were intentionally intensely emotional. Abandoned was the old custom of quietly and reverently listening to a solemn spiritual message. Worship became exuberantly physical. And this is how one person described it. Singing and shouting was augmented by falling, jerking, rolling, laughing. Think about it. The power of God was moving in those camp meetings. Preachers and Congregationalists became born-again devil fighters. 
Amen. And people showed up in order to get their cups filled. Praise God. They had one big meeting in Cambridge, Kentucky in 1802 where over 20,000 people showed up at that camp meeting. 20,000 people in the 1800s wow. showed up to hear the preaching. One man described it like this. The noise was like the roar of Niagara. The vast sea of human beings seemed to be agitated as if by a storm. I counted seven ministers all preaching at one time, some standing on tree stumps and others in the back of wagons. Some of the people were singing, others were praying, some were crying for mercy. My, my, my. <laughs> A peculiarly strange sensation came over me. My heart beat tumultuously. My knees trembled. My lips quivered. Mm. And I felt as though I must fall to the ground. As I thought about Isaac and his reopening the wells today, I paused to realize in sadness that the house of worship should be a channel for the blessings of God to flow. Amen. But in many churches, the well has been stopped up Amen. and is dry, and the water has ceased to flow. Paul warned about this day. He said in 2 Timothy 3 and 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power. Oh, they still have the name. Come on. <clears throat> but not the power. In many churches across our countries, pastors will shy away from such unpopular subjects as hell. Amen. I'm just being honest with you this morning. Repentance. The life-changing power of the gospel, God's plan for marriage in the home, fasting and praying, sanctification and holiness, wholehearted commitment to God. Amen. You know what? It's time this morning for the wells to be reopened. If we're going to have the power of God move in our midst, we need to look in our own hearts and we need to say, Lord, if there's anything in my life that is stopping the power of God from moving, let's get it out of there. Let's dig it out, Lord. I need to dig out the wells this morning and let the power of God begin to flow again. How do the wells get stopped up? Sometimes it is neglect that causes these wells to be filled in. The well is sitting there in the desert in the sands and the wind just blow and it just begins to fill up over time and nobody's keeping up with it. Neglect. To give little attention to. To leave undone or unattended, especially through carelessness. Hebrews 2 and 3 says, How shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation. Oh, we must not neglect our prayers. We must not neglect our families. We must not neglect our commitment to the Lord. And we must not neglect the gift that is in thee. Oh, sometimes we need to say, God, I want your spirit to just take complete control. I want your spirit to move in my life today. Oh, I want to walk in the spirit and not in my flesh. Oh, I want to put you first in everything that I do today. I want to get closer to you today, Jesus, than I was yesterday. I want to be wholly devoted to you, God. I want to give you all of my heart, all of my soul. I want to be a living sacrifice laying on the altar dedicated to you God I present my body Lord a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God sometimes it's neglect that allows the well to be filled in and sometimes it's an enemy that's what it says here it says the Philistines have stopped the well after the death of Abraham. And oh, we have an enemy today, don't we? The devil. 
that old ancient enemy of our souls. And he loves to come in and stop up wells where God wants to bring blessings in our life. He loves to reach in and he tries to slow down the flow of God's life-giving water. He wants to see it dry up. Oh, I'm telling you right now, we have to make up our mind that we are going to say, no, devil, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to let God be in control of my house. Come on, fathers. It's time to stand up and say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I will not let my well be filled in. Hallelujah. Isaac, he had a relationship with God. Think about how close he was to God. They're walking up the mountain together. And he looks over and he says, Father, you have everything ready for the sacrifice. But where is the lamb? Where is the sacrifice? Where is the animal that is to be slain? And Abraham answered, the Lord will provide himself a sacrifice. And he laid Isaac onto that altar. And he drew back with that knife. And he was about to end his life right there on that altar. And all of a sudden it says, An angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham. Isn't that powerful? Amen. You know, you don't ever think about it from Isaac's point of view. But imagine somebody later coming and trying to say, Isaac, how do you know God is real? Oh, I tell you what, I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for God. Amen. I would not be alive today had it not been for God. Don't tell me He's not alive. My Father's God is real. I heard Him call out from heaven and say, Abraham, touch not the lad. Now I Fear not, for I am with thee, and will bless thee, and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. Verse 25, and he builded an altar there. He builded an altar there, called on the name of the Lord, pitched his tent there, and Isaac's servants digged a well. He built an altar, he digged a well. Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. God is calling out to us. There are underground streams in this world that we cannot create. But what we must do is we must tap into them. You must get down to the source of the water. And once that water is released, it will be a blessing. God put the water in the ground. But notice He didn't tell Isaac, go lay down under a tree somewhere and take a break while I dig this well. Come on. He has already provided, but Isaac had to dig the well. Amen. Oh, he has already provided. He's provided everything you need. When those times that your spirit is dry and you're feeling cold in your heart and your desire to live for God is being surrounded and pushed and squeezed by the things of this world, he has provided. But what you have to do is you have to dig the well. You have to reach out and get a prayer life going. You have to reach out and make contact with God. You have to reach out and say, I am not satisfied. I want more from you, God. I want my life to be in harmony with you, God. I want to get closer to you today. It's time to stand up and take up your cross and come out boldly and say, I am living for God. I don't care what everyone else will do, but I am going to put God first. And don't worry about it. If you stumble, He'll raise you up. If you err, He will bring you back. If you faint, He will revive you. He did not lead you out into the wilderness to, 
out of Egypt to allow you to perish in the wilderness. He is going to take you safely home. Amen. He's going to take you all the way home. The psalmist said, Thou will show me the path of life. In my presence is fullness of joy. Amen. You will never find the fullness of joy until you get closer to God and stand in His presence. Amen. 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 Jesus. Thank you. Isaac built an altar. And that's what we have to do. We have to build an altar. The children of Israel had turned from God and they were off in different directions. Drifting away from God. And Elijah called all the people together. And he got them up on the mountain. And he said, who is on the Lord's side? No one would stand with Elijah. And so it says in verse 30 of 1 Kings 18. Elijah said unto the people, come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord Amen. that was broken down. <clears throat> oh, it's time to bring an altar back into your home. Oh, it's time to have that true life. It's time to put God first in all that you do. Satan will always seek a way to stop you from praying. He will always try to stop up your well. But you know what you need to do? You just need to ask God. In John 4 and 10, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that says to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of Him, and He would have given you living water. The woman said unto Him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. For whence then hast thou that living water? You know, he told her that there was a Messiah. <laughs> she said, there's a Messiah coming one day. She said, I that speak unto you and me. But listen to this from Zechariah 14. It's talking about the Messiah. In verse 8, it says, It shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem. Amen. 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 And wasn't it in Jerusalem where Jesus stood up on the steps and cried, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. True worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth. Oh, it's time to say, God, I need more truth in my life. Oh, I need to have a Bible study going every day. I need to search the Scriptures. I need to put you first in all that I do. There was a young king named Josiah, and he came to the throne. And the first thing that he did in 2 Kings 22 was he said, I want them to go and repair the breaches in God's house. And they went and hired carpenters and builders and builders and masons and they bought timber and hewn stone to repair the house. And as they were repairing the house, they found the book of the law. Yeah. It says in 2 Kings 22 and 10, And Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest has delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the book of the law that he rent his clothes. What are you saying? I'm saying that he heard the word of God. The hot tears began to flow down his cheek. He began to realize there's more. I haven't been giving God my best. There's more that I could be doing for God. There's more that I must be doing for God. The wells of salvation have been stopped up. God is wanting to move in our midst. And we've allowed so many things to get in between us.